Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we have two verses to look at. So we're going to start with Jeremiah and work our way out from there. Let's go there. It's Jeremiah 17, 14. It says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Now let's go up here. Now we did the book of Jeremiah, but let's take a look here. Um, yeah. Let's go up here to verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I've heard people recently talk about God wants to make us prosper uh, so we can follow our hearts, so we can um, do what our heart wants to do. I'm, I'm going to go with my heart. All these phrases here. Talking about my heart, my heart. The heart is deceitful. The heart lies to you. Right there, it says it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Should we be following our heart? Absolutely not. So when I hear somebody say that phrase, the Lord wants us to, in, in a video we here just a couple of days ago, I was, I was sent, uh, it, the man talks about the very same thing, says that phrase, the Lord wants to prosper us so we can follow our heart. No, it's not biblical. My heart will take me to places I don't want to go and it take me places the Lord doesn't want me to go. So I can't follow my heart. Right here, right here in the scriptures. Verse 10, I know, or sorry, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So he knows better what we're doing than what we do. He knows us better than we know us. Verse 11, as a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. See, there's ways where they say, oh, they're giving tithes. So, I mean, the Lord said it's okay for me to do that kind of stuff. It's in the Bible. I can, I'm worthy of my wage. I can take a paycheck on it. Yeah, but are you coercing the people passively? Then it's not by right. See, this is a big problem. So is he who gets riches, but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at his end he will be a fool. There's a lot of people in that boat. Verse 12, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Now Jeremiah prays, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Indeed, they say to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. It's right here. As for me, I have not hurried away from being a shepherd who follows you, nor have I desired the woeful day. You, the, what's, what's the woeful day? Tribulation. You know what came out of my lips. It was right there before you. Do not be a terror to me. You are my hope in the day of doom. Let them be ashamed to persecute me, but do not let me be put to shame. Let them be dismayed, but do not let me be dismayed. Bring on them the day of doom and destroy them with double destruction. Then he goes into his speech to them about the Sabbath. Why can't you guys give me this one day? You do this and I'll change everything. You guys remember the playlist. It was actually really good. So that's that one. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Now, let's go to Isaiah 57, 18. Isaiah. I know I'm looking right, but there it is. Isaiah 57, 18. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts to him and to his Mourners. Let's read this. One, two, three, four, five. Comfort for the contrite. Perfect place to start. Verse 14. And one shall say, heat it up, heat it up. Or heap it up, heap it up. Prepare the way. Take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. A contrite spirit is a grieving spirit. 
to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit would fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of it, he's, he's very aware of our, of our brokenness. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I hid and was angry, and he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore the comforts to him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Notice he says, God is saying, I create the fruit. I create the fruit of his lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Powerful stuff. But what is our focus today? Being healed. What kind of healing? Spiritual healing. It is the sole prerogative of God to remove spiritual disease. Natural disease may be instrumentally healed by men, but even then the honor is to be given to God who hath virtue unto medicine, and bestoweth power unto the human frame to cast off disease. So for everybody misunderstanding pharmacia, God's the one that teaches them how to do that stuff. As for spiritual sickness, if you look up the original language, you'll understand what it's referring to. Phys um, as for spiritual sicknesses, these are the ones he's concerned with. That's why many of us don't get healed from our things. It, it's good for us to have this because it keeps us humble. As for spiritual sicknesses, these remain with the great physician alone. He claims it as his prerogative. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And one of the Lord's choice titles is Jehovah Rophi, the Lord that healeth thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds. Spiritual, keep in mind, we're in spiritual. See, as believers, we have to learn to get out of the carnal. I will heal, uh, I will heal thee of thy wounds as a promise which could not come from the lip of man, but only from the mouth of the eternal God. On this account the psalmist cried unto the Lord, O Lord, heal me, for my bones are sore vexed. And again, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Notice he's talk they are all all these statements are spiritual in nature. For this also the godly praise the name of the Lord, saying, He healeth all our diseases. What diseases? Spiritual, not physical, spiritual. He who made man can restore man. He who was at first the creator of our nature can new create it. What a transcendent comfort it is that in the person of Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. My soul, whatever thy disease may be, God, this great God. physician, this great physician can heal thee. If he be God, there can be no limit to his power. Come then with the blind eye of darkened understanding. Notice Notice the reference in here. Blind eye of darkened understanding. Come with the limping foot of wasted energy. Come with the main wasted energy. That's a good one. We've been talking about that the last couple of days. Come with the maimed hand of weak faith, the fever of an angry temper, or the og of shivering despondency. Come just as thou art, for he who is God can certainly restore thee of thy plague. Spiritual, not physical. That's why many of us don't get healed. He never promised he would heal us physically. In fact, it says that anyone who seeks to live a godly life will lead a rough one. None shall restrain the healing virtue which proceeds from Jesus our Lord. Your spiritual, your spiritual healing is much more important than your physical. So many people are hyper-focused on being physically healed because that's what the prosperity preachers teach you. No, no, no. You need spiritual healing, most of all. None shall restrain the healing virtue which proceeds from Jesus our Lord. Legions of devils have been made to own the power of the beloved physician, and never once has he been baffled. All his patients have been cured in the past and shall be in the future, and thou shalt be one among them, my friend, if thou wilt but rest thyself in him this night. Now right away a lot of people are going to say, okay, now wait a minute. They, back then he was doing all kinds of physical healings. What about that? Okay. The church had to start somewhere. And in order to instigate its 
firing. In order to get it to go, he had to put gas on the fire. You know, you start a car, it's got no fuel in it, won't start up, lawnmower, whatever, won't start up. You squirt a little gas down in the intake, boom, she fires right up. See, he had to do that with the church. He had to kickstart the church. And the prophecy surrounding him said he would do those things. So he was fulfilling prophecy. Does God still heal? Yeah, he still physically heals. I've seen it happen. I've played parts in it. My dad did with me and my brother. We both had super high fevers. Way back when we were, ba ba we were babies. But that's not the focal point. The focal point is the spiritual healing. We need spiritual healing. We need to be made whole spiritually. The body, the body cannot be made whole unless the spirit is made whole. Because a wounded spirit, a wounded soul, somebody who's broken on the inside, it's just rotten decay to the body. We need that spiritual regeneration. And that's what this is all about, spiritual regeneration. So many people are focused on the carnal. They're focused on satisfying their carnal desires. So when they think about the mansion that Jesus is building, and they think about the, the feast and all these things, and they come up with all these wild imaginations about things we're going to do, and they're so far outside of what it's talking about. But Jesus said he's, he's going to gird himself and make us sit down to meet. Right. But did you look at what that, re that references elsewhere? Is not the word of God food indeed? Is it not bread? See, they used to refer to bread as meat. Is it not the choice meats? We start with the milk of the word and go into the meat, meat and potatoes of the word. So see, you, you see the word meat, but when you look at the deeper understanding that's contained within the scriptures, there's more there. He's actually talking about sitting down with the word. He's going to show us all the things that are in the word. Will we be able to eat? Yeah, I'm sure we will. Is that the focus? No. Not the focus. The focus is so much greater. The focus is a spiritual gathering. And so that's what we need to do. In a manner of speaking, we're under a spiritual rapture at the moment. He's gathering his church together. But there will be a physical change. There will be things that will be physical. But there's a greater aspect to it. Much greater. So when he heals us, is it more important to be healed of the sickness or be healed of the spirit? Because if it was about healing the body, Timothy would have been healed. Why didn't Paul heal him? It wasn't for him to be healed. Why wasn't Paul able to heal himself? It wasn't for him to be healed. Some of us, it's not for us to be healed. But that spiritual healing every single one of us needs. Every single one of us must have it. That is your salvation. You need that. And you once you're saved, you need it refreshed every day. To reinforce what's already there. To bring about something greater. It's very important. Are we going to be able to do it? Are we going to be able to achieve it? It's not up to us. It's up to him. We say yes. We make the decision to believe. We say, yeah, I'm going to believe. He gives us everything we need to make that choice. But then he's the one that does the healing, not us. But what do you hear people out there telling you? Follow your heart. No, no, no. Don't follow your heart. Follow him. And he will heal your heart. Because we all need our heart healed very badly. There's been so much misunderstanding around the scriptures, it is staggering, it's mind-boggling how badly people have misunderstood, by accident or on purpose, the scriptures and what they've intended. But the Lord, I think he knew that. And when I go back and I look in history and look at the events that happened in the history, every time that was happening in the church over the last 2,000 years, he always called up a watchman. And I believe it may be the watchman's responsibility to reset those things, to bring people back to center to correct them. I was talking to Paul. Uh, Woodward earlier in an email and I was like I don't I, I don't I, I'm at the point now I don't care what they do because we're talking about them shutting us down which they're working on they're starting to do it I don't, I don't care anymore I said I'm unconcerned with it because we are so close at this point I don't even know if it's if we're able, even able to get warnings out there anymore there's just such a small select group of people that are listening 
So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to let the Lord do what he's doing, and I'm going to do what he gave me to do. Just like you're going to do your ministry, Paul, I'm going to do mine, and the Lord will take care of everything else. And I'm going to trust him for that. And not worry about what the rest of the world is doing. It's not my concern. Uh, I'm not supposed to judge another man's servant like that. He takes care of that. And he will. So what we do is what we've been given to do. But we need that healing. We need that spiritual healing in order to do the things that we've been given to do. We need to be refreshed and renewed every day. Fresh grace, new grace. Every day. Mercy. Rejuvenation. Regeneration. Every day. That's the kind of healing we need. And the Lord knows us. He knows our backslidings. He knows our mistakes. He will heal us. But if we could ever get our mind out of the carnal and get it into the spiritual, so much, much more of this makes so much more sense. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Because now you read scriptures from a spiritual standpoint, and you're like, ah, now I understand what he's attempting to do here. And you really start to grasp I was listening to somebody earlier doing a little blog. It was a blog, Mablog. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the guy's name. And he was talking about Israel and the stuff that was going on, the different sects that there are and the different beliefs and all that. And pretty much he described Mist Mystery Babylon. <laughs> somebody else was t uh, describing, uh, and somebody else, I think it was um, John that I was watching, and he was talking about uh, the guy that was coming to all the things he was going to do as the Antichrist. And, and I commented, and I was like, you just described Jared Kushner. <laughs> so, it's so funny because the more spiritual you become, the more these things become so clear. And it's like, why am I seeing this? And, and I keep thinking, okay, am I the only one seeing this? And if I am, there's got to be something wrong with it. But I've started to realize all throughout the Bible, it was almost just one or just a couple of people that were in the truth. Everybody else was wandering around. It was just a few. And why would this time be any different? Now, I think there's more people in the truth now. But I think that's because of, that's part of his doing. Because he's using every one of you and every one of us. He's using us all to get that truth out there. This is the wind-up. This is the final pitch. The door is shutting. The end of this age is upon us. So we need spiritual healing. And we should be looking forward to that spiritual healing. And praying, Lord, I am broken. I am a sinner. I need this spiritual healing. And so we cry out for it. And he gives it because that's what his promises were. We have to remember his promises and pray them back to ourselves. Or pray them to him or remind ourselves of them. If he said it, that's how it's going to happen. We can bank on that. We can trust that. We can rely on that. It's a very good thing. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray he heals your spiritual condition, just like I pray he heals mine. I need it every day. I'll see you in the next video.